So hi, I'm Lydia. I'm a junior doctor. I'm here with my team from Forwards, so as Philip, Will and Lucinda. And the first thing to say is that this business really should never have happened. And that's because I'm engaged to Philip and you should absolutely never work with your fiance. <laughs> So the story is that I started work two years ago, I'd come home every day um, hugely frustrated at the communication and workflow challenges that I was having. So not being able to contact people with pages, waiting by the phone, using WhatsApp and Snapchat as a workaround, and carrying around a paper list. Um, so if I just move on and show you just the middle one. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yep. So this is literally the state of clinical communication in the NHS at the moment. And it's not only in the NHS, in fact, it's literally all over Europe. So bleeps. Um, don't need to explain the problems with those for any of you that have used them. But if any of you haven't, you have no idea whether you're being bleeped to prescribe a laxative or because somebody has stopped breathing in A&E. It's a huge waste of time going to answer the phone, waiting for the phone to ring. You have to leave the patient's bedside. Um, WhatsApp, obviously not legal, um, com combined with your social messages from your mum, from your friends, and paper handover lists. So every doctor will carry around a list of patients that they're looking after, that annotate that during the day. That gets lost, and then you lose your entire task list for that day. It's a data protection issue. It's really inefficient. So that's what we're using at the moment. I'll try again with this thing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that's what led to Forward. So Forward is the clinical communications and workflow platform for doctors. Um, we basically did some research because I, I didn't know whether the problems I was having were unique to me or whether they were universal. So we surveyed about 120 doctors and we found that um, pretty much everybody wanted a solution to this set of problems. So we focused on what people really wanted, which was secure messaging. Um, it was tasks. So, for example, if you're in a small team of doctors and you're separated in the hospital, one of you um, goes to book a CT, maybe the other person goes to book the same CT for the same patient, you've both wasted half an hour, essentially. Um, people also wanted a, a patient notebook, so like the handover list, something that you could carry around with you and annotate live. So, say a patient's admitted to A&E under your team, you then add that patient, everybody on your team can then see that there's a new patient, they can see what needs to be done for them. It just gives you a bit of control. And I think that's, that's the key about this. Doctors are leaving the NHS in droves. People's morale is an absolute low. This is about giving people some of that time and autonomy and morale back. Um, next slide, please. Thank you very much. Okay, so trust we've trialled in. So Frimley, um, we trialled for two-week period there, and people sent about 6,500 messages, so that is a lot of communication. Doctors and clinical teams communicate a lot. Um, we also have Medway using the platform now. We have about 250 users there. Um, the feedback's been overall really positive so far. Um, so, next one, please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just a quick thing on how do you make this safe, because you're probably all thinking patient details on personal phones, that sounds very worrying to me. Um, we've made this compliant with the NHS IG toolkit, um, so it's two-factor authenticated, you have to have an NHS email address to log in, um, you have to, there's a PIN protection function, and we follow all the guidelines for data protection in the EU and the UK. No data stored on the device, if you lose your phone it's not an issue, that's just wiped. Um, great. So that's it. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear them. Okay. Fantastic. Who's got questions for Lydia? Thanks. Yes, great. Oh, great presentation. I'm curious. So, your biggest competitor is streams from Google DeepMind. Um, aside from being in a legal kerfuffle with the regulators, what differentiates your product from, from streams? Um, so streams was developed to manage AKI, essentially. And okay. um, the communication platform is fairly basic. Lots of systems, even some that we've heard about today, 
will have communication platforms built into them, but they don't give junior doctors exactly what they need to be efficient at work. So that's essentially the difference. That was developed to manage AKI. We're managing a universal problem. Thank you for your presentation. Have you also considered the patient-physician communication? Because this is another yeah. place where WhatsApp is Definitely. an incumbent. Yeah. Definitely. And I think that's, that's a real issue at the moment. Patients don't necessarily take in what's gone on the ward round. They might not know which doctor is actually looking after them, which nurse is on today. So that's something we'd love to do in the future. But I think for a patient-facing platform, that's a much bigger thing. <laughs> really, we have to tackle this first. But it's a great idea, yeah. really good product. Um, how do um, the hospitals or CCGs procure this product? How do you get it in? So currently it's free because we just really felt that this problem needed to be solved. Um, we want to gather as much feedback as we can from users. And by the way, that doesn't just include doctors. It's got obvious potential for nurses, physios, etc., who currently aren't talking to each other. Their handover sheets are like completely different. Um, so we... I mean, we don't have a business model essentially yet. We have a number of ways in which this could be sustainable, but I think the first thing is to see what really works for people. It's, it's a wonderful platform. Does it depend on the strength of Wi-Fi or any other information system? It's offline. It has an offline mode. It uses the same data and battery as WhatsApp. Uh, sorry, what is the offline mode? So you can type messages, but it won't send until it's online. Is there a way to bypass that? Well, <laughs> you, you, you're going to have to find some because Wi-Fi. That is where the bleep yeah. system oversends all. The bleep is always yeah, available. Yeah, that's absolutely true. But you know, 99%, and I'm not even exaggerating, of clinical teams are using WhatsApp at the moment to communicate. So they must be getting data from somewhere. Have you, have, you, have you thought of the local Wi-Fi system? We generate yeah. the phone generates itself a Wi-Fi system up to 50 yeah. or 100 meters. Have you thought of that as part of replacement? So Wi-Fi? we've thought of mesh networks. We've yeah. actually thought a lot about um, use in other countries and perhaps like wilderness settings, and that's something that we'd be keen to develop. But I think you know hospitals finally are getting good Wi-Fi networks. That is happening. So I think w it's it's not really an immediate problem because people are using platforms that rely on data. I worked in both hospitals, Medway and Frimley, as a okay, consultant. Yeah. I know the basement is poor. You can't get a signal there. That, that's why <laughs> the question was generated. Yeah, and yet people manage, so. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you for your presentation. I'm quite keen to know if we start to see some actually, I can see is it a function for task, and if there's um, task being allocated or any sort of clinical decision or advice starting to happen in the dialogue in the app, mm. how is that being um, integrated back into the patient record? Yeah, sure. Um, so we face this question about integration a lot. I think most platforms do. We purposefully do not integrate because we want a universal platform so that when doctors and nurses move hospitals, they're doing locum shifts in different places, they can still use forward. The things that happen clinically to the patient on this platform need to be recorded. Just like if you were to take a bleep from you know, another specialty, you would record in the patient notes that you've done that. If you've ordered a CT scan, you would record that in the notes. It's, it's a completely separate thing. Just to be aware of that, that duplication of entry will, um, I guess, uh, put a few people off with it. adoption. Um, you know, if you record it once, communicate it once, that again helps with time and efficiency. Just something well, yeah, but if you imagine bleeping someone to tell them something or instant messaging them to tell them something, that's, that's all we're doing, really. We're just creating a more efficient way of that process happening. So all these communications are already going on in a very inefficient way. Okay, wonderful. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.